All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jackie, Dr. Jackie Nolke, who is in Colorado. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Excellent. And uh, Dr. Jackie is the co-founder of Grateful Ads Company, as well as She EO Store and co-founder of ND Community. You help entrepreneurs start, grow, and scale online courses, services, memberships, so they can have the freedom they crave, which is a noble, a noble endeavor indeed. And what we want to talk about today is the number one type of ad that every business should be running. And if they're not, they're leaving money on the table. So let's dive into it, Jackie. What is the number one ad every company should be running? Yeah, so those are retar it's a retargeting ad or retargeting ads mm -hmm. are 100% what everyone should be running because essentially what happens if someone goes to your website, um, you want to stay on top of their mind, right? Because they are considering you. And if you're not doing that, you're leaving money on the table. Um, it's the good thing about retargeting ads as well is they're super inexpensive. So um, as far as the full ad strategy, those are the cheapest ads to run because you're not pushing it out to as many people as you would say at the, um, at the awareness stage where you're running to audiences that have never heard of you. So it is super important. I can't tell you how many times um, people will come to us, want us to look at their ads. They're interested in us running their ads for them. And I'll go in their ad account and I'm like, why don't you have any retargeting ads up? You're leaving money on the table. So um, I always like to tell everyone to make sure and do that for sure. Mm -hmm. So what is it about retargeting? Because um, obviously it's been around for a while now and you know, pe people have different differing opinions on it. So why is it from your point of view that it is it is so critical that you do this? Yeah, because I think a lot of times people, they're kind of shopping around or they're considering, you know, purchasing from you, whether you have a service-based business or um, even like courses or even e-commerce. Um, anything like that, as long as you have a website, it could even be a restaurant. Like if they're going to your website and they're considering maybe trying out your food, going over there, whatever, you want to all of a sudden be top of mind, right? So when they're making that in that decision phase, you want to be top of mind, which means you're showing up in their newsfeed as they're um, scrolling their feed. And they're going to think, oh, wow, this person's a big deal. I keep seeing them. They must really know what's up. I should contact them or I should go back to that website and purchase from them. So we find that it works really, really well for conversions. And so when you say that it's inexpensive, I mean, give us an idea of why you, why you would recommend it and um, why you would term this as less expensive than other, than other solutions. Yeah, so um, when we're in the awareness stage in our agency, we're spending a minimum of about a thousand a month um, on ads in that awareness phase. The retargeting, you can spend as low as a couple dollars a day, depending on how much traffic you're getting. So really, it, de it depends on what how big your business is, how much traffic you get. Obviously, the more traffic you get, the more you're going to have to spend because you're retargeting that. But the mm -hmm. reason why it's so inexpensive is because it's a much smaller audience than what you're going um, for in that consideration phase. So that means it's costless. <laughs> so it's like very specific on who we're sending these ads to. And they're the very specific people who have um, gone to your website. And we can even, we even get even more technical with it sometimes. And we'll start sending ads. Let's say for e-commerce, for example, if someone visits a certain product, we can send out ads to the people that have viewed that specific product. So it's reminding them, hey, you know, we you, you were checking this out. Do you want to, you know, complete your purchase? Um, that kind of thing. So you can get pretty technical with it, but um, it's really cool to be able to just kind of that nudge. It's like a nudge to come mm -hmm. back to the website. And what about in terms of, um, I mean, there's a lot of different platforms, I guess, that you can mm -hmm. use for this. What are some of the more effective ones from your point of view, or do you, or do you endorse anyone in particular? Yeah, so Facebook and Instagram, hands down, the best for this. Um, mm -hmm. The best for um, very specific actions. Now, I'm sure everyone's heard the iOS update. This is making this a little different, but there are things we're going to be able to do to continue this tracking. You just have to do some extra steps back in your um, in your ads manager. Right. 
Um, but though they're the 100% best as far as if someone comes to remind you. Like Google, I like a lot for search. I mean, so I think Google along with Facebook and Instagram together make a very powerful ad strategy because a lot of times they might find you through Google, but your retargeting is coming through Facebook and Instagram. So um, a lot of times they can work together beautifully. Okay, okay, perfect. All right, so um, from a psychological point of view, what is it about retargeting that actually connects with with prospective buyers? Because, I mean, I know when we see it, we've all experienced it, sometimes it can seem a little much where it's just a, everywhere you go, it's like you're going, oh my goodness, when this, I hate people leave me alone. But um, yeah. what, are, what, are some of the, what, are, what are some of the effects, psychological effects that make it successful? Yeah, well, one is can be kind of FOMO. So depending on your ad copy, so you can show if it's a product, you can show people with the ad, how they're enjoying the ad. You can show testimonials if it's a course, something like that. And so people start feeling kind of that FOMO of the fear of missing out. They are mm -hmm. seeing other people getting this result or um, enjoying whatever you're selling and they want that to be part of their life too. So that's one thing that you can pick up on those ads to help them nudge to um, complete that purchase. Another thing is just, again, being top of mind. So I'm sure as a sales expert, you've heard like sometimes people need like those seven touch points. They used to mm -hmm. say, now they're saying it's up to like 14, it's changed. But um, this is how you're getting those touch points. So say someone doesn't know your brand, but happened on your site. And so they're not ready to make that purchase from you, you can build that trust by running ads. Now, what you're probably talking about is sometimes people don't switch up the creative. It's the same ad right. over and over. And yeah, that's not the best um, way to go about it. It's definitely better to have different copy and creative. So people are seeing different ads, they're getting different information and it's help filling those gaps to help them make that better decision. Yeah, no, that's, I think that is the point because I think if you keep finding the same thing everywhere number one you feel a bit stalked and second off you're like yeah like i visited your website like leave me alone <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely yeah so it's good to use that real estate to um educate right on don't just say hey come back to my site but educate on why they might they they would want to finish that purchase yeah, yeah. So let's let's um, dive into that a little bit, because I think that's the critical point, because some of the ones I've seen, like I said, literally, it's just, you know, hey, come back, come back, come back. Um, but what are some of the better strategies that you've seen about using creative to 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 reengage people? Yeah, so um, it is good to definitely have a scroll stopper, right? So something that stops their attention right away and they identify with whatever your site was they were looking for. And then testimonials work great. Video testimonials work really good. So if you have mm. video testimonials that you can run as retargeting ads, that's great. Cause it's like, Hey, you know, we saw you come check it out. Understand you have questions, like watch these videos to see how this um, has changed these people's lives or whatever. And so those video testimonials work really well. Testimonial carousels work really well where people can scroll and they're just seeing you know, cause it's, you're basically the, what you're trying to do is build trust fast. Right. So you know they're interested, but you need to build that trust um, in the next, you know, three or four days as they're seeing a few ads for them to come back and make that purchase. So you're going to want to, when you're thinking about that and you're in just regular marketing, how would you build trust through regular marketing? It's going to be the same thing, putting money behind it. It's just that you're going to get seen by all these people because it's very likely through the strategy that you'll get the reach will be there. So the people that did go to the website are going to see those testimonial ads. They'll see um, the ads of people using your, your product. They'll see um, an, an objection buster ad is what I call it, where you're kind of going through the objections that people might have about buying your product. Um, and that's going to help them make that educated decision because, you know, you're not everyone that lands on your site is going to be the right customer, right. but we want to give them enough information so they can make an educated decision on if that's the right product for them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from the people that you've worked with, what are some of the what are some of the more creative or clever uh, campaigns that people have run? Yeah, so sometimes people get really creative with video, so it, it's almost like. Um, 
shooting like a little mini movie. And so mm -hmm. that can be a lot of fun. And so that's for people that are really comfortable on video um, for that to work. But those do work really well where you almost set up, it's almost like a little scene um, that they have set up and recorded to get their point across really fast. And it's entertaining. It's normally funny because people like to laugh, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, so those are the most creative, I would say for sure. Yeah. I mean, and obviously the thing with humor, though, you have to be careful because some people think they're funnier than they are. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And and obviously then there's nuances to, you know, there's, there's cultural nuances to comedy, too. But but I mean, I like uh, I, I like that idea. So somehow, I mean, I guess what you're thinking about is, OK, so somebody came to your website, probably. Um, went around for a bit or whatever so if you're going to re-engage them you have to be creative in doing that you have to give them reasons why they would want to to continue to engage with what pops up yeah I think that that works the best I mean of course you could be um just put one up one ad up and say you know come back to our site but what is that really doing like you really want to think of the what it takes for someone to buy knowing their their objections that you commonly get about buying um in explaining those objections, any like also any kind of like, if, especially if it's a, a high ticket uh, product, mm -hmm. you would want to do like um, FAQ type questions, answers in the ad, that kind of thing to like really answer everything. So again, they're empowered. They know um, everything they need to know to come back and, and purchase. So where does where does retarget marketing go from here? Because I mean, there seems to be so many developments just in marketing technology in general, and mm -hmm. everything is iterating, you know, at a, at a rate, of, an exponential rate almost. Where do you see retargeting going? Yeah, I think that it is going to change a little bit with the different privacy updates. Um, we're going to have to basically use more tech for it, mm -hmm. um, but it. But the companies are developing that all the time as well. Um, another thing with, with retargeting, I think in everyone, we all know in, in sales that email lists are important. Growing your email list is always something you should be doing. And I've always preached that and I always will because we can easily, we'll always be able to retarget that email list. So um, that's also important to think about because you can throw in your email list into um, like the back of Facebook, for example, and you can run ads directly to those people, which I actually recommend you doing. So if you do a newsletter, for example, and you have really great content that goes out and let's say you're getting like 20% of your newsletters opened, that's great. But you could get a much higher, like 80 to 90% of people seeing that same content through ads. So you could run that same content through ads um, targeting the people on your email list. So that's another kind of little hack. Um, yeah, no, that, that's, that's a really interesting one. So, um, and how, and, and just explain how that works. Yeah. So you just download like whatever you're using for your email, you download mm -hmm. it, and upload it to Facebook. Um, and then you set a reach ad. We just do that when it's not when it's when we're not looking for conversions necessarily, we're just trying to um, get people to see the ad. You set mm -hmm. a reach ad as your objective, and run that to your email list, and um, they pretty much all are going to see it. <laughs> that information. <laughs> so if it's like if you've taken really good information, and depending on the size of your email list, you might only have to spend you know five ten dollars on that, um, right. and you know in that way like you know, that information that you've taken the time to really develop and, and share out there gets out to the people you want it to get out to. Oh, well, yeah, that's, uh, that's fascinating. Yeah, because I mean, I think that that is, I mean, let's face it, like email marketing is, it's tough, right? It's very yeah. tough today. And especially with, um, you know, people are overloaded, attention span, spam filters, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you have to start getting creative. Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. So what are, what are some other ways, um, what are some other ways that you've seen retargeting being used really well? Yeah, so another thing that we can do, if you're really active on your, like organically and you do a lot of videos, things like that, we can retarget specific videos even. So say you have an offer that is, um, that's really complimentary to a video you did. So mm -hmm. you know that the people that were interacting and, and commenting and liking and, even watching, you know, a certain percentage of that are probably interested in what you are offering. We can even right. do it specific to that video of people that watch 25% are engaged in the video. So we can get very, um, 
very specific on what exactly we want to retarget. Or maybe we want to retarget a series of videos because you did a series of videos on that subject. Right. We can target all those at that 25% because we know people, if they've sat and watched you know, a little bit of it, they have some interest in it, right? So mm -hmm. we can retarget that. That works really well too for um, building, that, uh, building that brand, building that trust. And we could also do what we do sometimes is it's kind of like a waterfall. So you'll have one video that you put up and everybody that watches 25% of that video gets the second video. And everybody right. that watches 25% of that video gets the third video. So you're constantly coming up in the in people's feeds, but these people are showing interest because they're sitting and watching, you know? So um, it makes you look like a really big deal because you're coming up and you're sharing all this amazing information and being seen by the people that want to watch your stuff. So that's um, one thing we like to do in our agency for sure. Excellent. Now, is there any, and, and just in a general question, is there anything else coming in in um, in email or, or retargeting or marketing in general? Are there, are there any things that you see coming that maybe um, people aren't that aware of or new developments? Yeah, so there's definitely this new iOS update that is changing things a lot and we don't really know yet what exactly it's going to look like because it hasn't rolled out yet it's rolling out at the time of this recording in a couple of weeks um we do know that there's some extra steps we need to take um as far as you, you need to verify your domain like in facebook for example mm -hmm. you have to set up specific events um so there's different ways that you have to go about um setting up your back end that nice. takes a little bit more work <laughs> than it did before. But, you know, with everybody always kind of has a little bit of a belt down anytime there's these big, huge changes, as as digital marketers do. But in the mm -hmm. end, it always works out. They always come out with something else to help us, you know, navigate that. So um, is it a pain right now? Yes. Am I that worried about it? No, I know that there'll be the tools for me to figure everything out. <laughs> it's right, just right. It's just going to be that process. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, this is great. Thank you so much, uh, Jackie. All of Jackie's information is going to be below this video, obviously. Um, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit about, more about what you and your agency does. Yeah, so we are a full service marketing agency. We do everything from um, email marketing to um, Facebook ads, Google ads, we pretty much do it all. Our specialty are Facebook and Google ads, um, mm -hmm. but we we can do all those other things too. We also build out Shopify sites, we build funnels, we do all that kind of stuff in our agency. Um, so you can find us at gratefulads.com. And if you're interested in just talking with us, you can fill out an application and we'll be glad to talk to you. Great. Well, listen, thank you so much for today. And I would encourage people to check out uh, Jackie's company. Um, I'm a big believer in nowadays things are getting so complicated that you need to engage with domain experts in different areas. So if you're going to do retarget marketing or whatever, so it is engaged with an expert because let's face it, Jackie, this is true. It's true of Google ads. It's true of retarget. You can spend a lot of money very fast for very few results if you're not careful. Oh, yes. 100%. It's good to at least either, if you're not going to hire out, at least take a court, get educated on it, do something because if you go in without a plan, it's going to cost you for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Jackie. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.